Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Batman the Animated Series is one of the most beloved and successful animated superhero shows ever produced, and my personal favorite of all time. J.J. Abrams, Matt Reeves, Bruce Timm, along with Amazon, just released their reboot of that animated show called Batman the Cape Crusader. And yeah, it's great packaging. But with J.J. Abrams and Amazon, we should have realized that they were going to take one of the most iconic pop culture characters and the template of one of the greatest animated shows and use them as a platform for their social message. But first, as always, let's get with the good. The show has been able to replicate a lot of the animation style of the original 90s show, with a little bit of polish thrown in, and with a little bit of the classic comic book aesthetics, such as the art deco buildings, the fashion, the cars, and even though there's not a specific timeline given, you do feel that you are in the pre-digital age, the 50s, maybe the early 60s. And this is the Cape Crusader's best attribute. It is a great package with great bells and whistles. Unfortunately, that's where it ends, so let's get into it. Bruce Wayne is, a lot of the time, not the main character, and neither is Batman. He's on the sidelines for narratives that perform more feminine leads. He's not depicted as the great detective that he's supposed to be, in fact, the actual world's greatest detective. No, he's usually showing up after another character, a more feminine character, has gotten to the crime scene first. He's curt, he is dismissive, he is rude, especially to people he would never be that way with, such as Alfred. Bruce Wayne is kind of an asshole. And yeah, white, rich guy, that kind of fits with Amazon and Abrams and Bad Reboot in general. It's as if they went out of their way to make Batman unlikable and too robotic, and that is the greatest mistake people make when creating a Batman storyline. They forget that he is a man in control of his emotions, but one of extreme sensitivity to loss, sadness, fear, anger, and loyalty. Most people, and certainly not surprisingly here, J.J. Abrams, forget to humanize Bruce Wayne and go with the easy parody of who he is because, let's face it, J.J. Abrams is not capable of originality. He is someone who just minds others' works to take from them and color them a little differently and then call him his own. But with that said, we don't have to worry about Batman. He's only the title character. He's not the main character. So let's move on to the other, more important ones. In episode one, we get to meet the race swap, gender swap citizens of Gotham. Commissioner Gordon, he's a man, so he's not competent at his job, but he's a minority, so he's the underdog battling against the system that's keeping him from being competent. His daughter, the way more competent Barbara Gordon, who is not a librarian like she usually is. Nope, she's an African-American public defender, and her nemesis is Harvey Dent, the sleazy district attorney running for mayor. And oh yeah, Harvey's a straight white man, so he's evil. With the exception of Alfred and Bruce, kind of, straight white men are evil in this series, or they are the low-level intellectual thugs. Basically anything but decent. But again, Amazon, J.J. Abrams, bad reboot, kind of expected. The Penguin, one of Batman's most iconic foes, is now a woman. At least I think it's a woman. Maybe it's a tranny who has kids. Maybe a drag queen. I mean, I'm going with woman at this point, but really, it's anyone's guess. She straight up murders her children. But don't worry, it's done in a way that you're actually okay with it. Because like most women in the series, there's no accountability. These women do things because they're forced to do them. Due to the actions of bad men. Confused yet? I know, just hang in there, you'll catch on, let me explain. But first, what's up with Alfred? He's fat. I know, he's supposed to be an accomplished agent of Her Majesty's Secret Service and all that. Military hero, someone who could handle himself. Not anymore. He's a pudgy little butler who was actually abused verbally by Bruce on many occasions. So the whole father-son relationship that is so central to the Batman character, yeah, that's gone. Because positive role models for fathers and sons is something Amazon cannot promote. That would be way too middle America, and with an election coming up, we cannot have way too much middle America invading our entertainment. Clayface is introduced and they did an excellent job with his character and costume, but Batman was a minor character in this one again, because Detective Rene Montoya, who is I think a body positivity character because damn, she's wider than Bullock, is the woman in charge. And really, that's the point of this series, women not Batman. Selena Kyle is introduced, and we get our 1940s costume accurate Catwoman, who without any training or experience, can do parkour across rooftops and physically handle herself against a Batman in a fist fight. And oh yeah, for some reason, she can control a panther that she just acquired in order to help her break into a museum and attack at her command. But even though she's a criminal, it's not her fault. Her father was arrested for tax evasion and left her with only a middle income lifestyle when she wants the high class lifestyle, so she's 
forced to steal. It's all daddy's fault. She's the victim. She's entitled to everything she wants, but it was a man who kept her from getting it. But the best one is the new Harley Quinzel, because the old one, the Harley everyone knows and loves, is a victim. The Joker's girlfriend cannot be a victim in these modern times. Can't even be the Joker's girlfriend, really. That would be bad if we showed that. Instead, the Joker isn't even involved with Harley. Has nothing to do with her. Nope. Harley is a psychologist and a lesbian. You need to know that because it seems that a lot of the women in Gotham are lesbians. Barbara, Harley, Renee. I mean, in reality, only 1.8% of the female population actually identify as lesbian. But in Gotham, it's more like 50-50. Again, Amazon, J.J. Abrams, bad reboot. What did you expect? Just be glad Batman isn't giving Harvey Dent the old reach around at this point. Then again, I've only watched six episodes and who knows what's waiting for me. But I digress. Harley is a psychologist who uses her powers of, I guess psychology to make rich white men who are the symbols of capitalism do bad things to each other. She dresses them up in costumes like babies in diapers and has a foot fetish with tickling them with a feather as a form of torture. And yeah, whoever wrote this episode should be barred from being any closer than 500 yards near any school. She has a new costume, which is cool looking if you're not Harley Quinn. She and Renee have a date. They kiss. It is implied that Renee and Barbara used to have a thing together. And the show is less about a Batman story. Again, he is a minor character here and more about promoting a social message. So Harley fans, her story is completely in 100% retcon from the original nothing to do with arkham the joker or that relationship nope she's our anti-male anti-capitalist lesbian warrior who likes to tickle feet and dress men up in diapers and then i watched two more episodes and then i got to the point of asking myself why am i watching these anymore and yeah look Amazon and Abrams are hoping that the majority of you will just see animated Batman and don't question anything. Just consume the product with mouth agape and drooling. But do yourself a favor. If you want animated Batman, go back to the 90s and watch that series. It was better quality, better storytelling, better character development. It had Mark Hamill as the Joker and Kevin Conroy as Batman. And don't get me wrong, the voice acting here is fine. Nothing special, just fine. Adequate. But this is simply a cash grab and the key jingling to get more people to the Amazon platform and more people indoctrinated to the message of modern day Hollywood. A message based on gender and sexual identity, and it's just gotten so old at this point that it has very little value left in it. We see these projects for what they are, egotistical and creatively bankrupt artists trying to leech off the popularity of something that came way before them in order to use it as a launching pad for their particular view of the world. And to be frank with you, the show, it's boring at this point. The show is boring, and it's just another missed opportunity to do something great, a task modern day Hollywood is just not up to anymore. And that's what I think. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Have you seen this series? What do you think of it? If you want more comic book fun, click on the thumbnails at the end of this video for my Welcome to the Comic Verse playlist and my movie review playlist. And if you did like this video, remember to like, subscribe, and share it out with others. It really helps us out each week. I thank you for watching. Remember, I'm still your reluctant gringo and from south of the border. Salud and a huevo.